hearts and souls be stirred now to seek and love and fear thee by thy teachings pure and holy drawn from earth to love thee so darkness shrouded till thy spirit breaks our night with the beams of truth unclouded thou alone to God canst win us thou must work all good within us Precious Lord, thyself impart, light of light from God proceeding. Open thou our ears and heart, help us by thy Spirit's pleading. Hear the cry thy church of raises. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, the King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 33, <coughs> verses 7 through 11. You mortal, 
I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is 119, verses 33 through 40. I invite you to read along with me this morning. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, and your righteousness preserve my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans chapter 13 verses 8 through 14 oh no one anything except to love one another for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law the commandments you shall not commit adultery you shall not murder you shall not steal you shall not covet and any other commandment as summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is? How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery, and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, 
go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's great to be preaching from the sanctuary and seeing you all in spirit. Well, both of our today's reading from Paul's letter to Romans and our gospel reading are about building relationship, about handling conflict, about restoration, and loving each other. Love one another. Love your neighbors, because love is everything. First, let me talk to you a bit about the gospel passage today. Many of us sometimes think this passage is about the exclusion in our relationships as a final choice. But the most important part about this passage is the context. The passage is sandwiched between the parable of the lost sheep and Jesus' exchange with Peter concerning the question of forgiveness, forgiveness, not seven times, but 70 times seven. The whole of the passage about restoration and reconciliation, restoring the wholeness of community. Today's gospel is not about shunning difficult people as the last option from the congregation or from our lives. It is about how to bring those sheep back in our congregations and in our lives. Last Wednesday, we had a chance to uh, meet with Bishop Wright on Zoom. He was talking to seminarians and mentioned about the lost sheep. He said, the lost sheep is not the innocent lamb which went missing. In fact, the lost sheep is that ram which lost from the community and we did not pursue that ram. Our job as a church, as a community, as a congregation, is to find that ram and bring them back, restore our relationship, love one another. The scripture passage establishes the necessity to maintain our relationship with our brothers and sisters in this sinful, broken world, and not to avoid the conflict which arise in our relationship because God cares about our relationship. God cares how we interact with each other. God wants us to love each other as we love ourselves. Here's why God cares about our relationship. When we look back into Old Testament, we see how God established relationship with Abraham, with Moses, David, and this list goes on and on and on. But while I was thinking about this passage, I was reminded the story of Jonah. Probably you all know about the story of Jonah. 
God sent him to Nineveh, but he went to Tarshish. In the first place, why God sent Jonah to Nineveh? God sent Jonah to Nineveh because God cared about relationships. When Jonah went to Tarshish, remember how events occurred over there. He went into the sea, in the belly of the big fish. Eventually, after all the events happened, Jonah ended up in the land where he was a foreigner and had nothing to do with them. But God wanted to save those people and restore the relationship with them. As I mentioned earlier, why God did that? Because God cares about relationships. Let me give my own personal story a little bit. When my dad passed away a few months ago, and right away the pandemic started, it was a devastating time for me. Still it's hard, but the beauty in those tough times I found was the relationships I had in this church and the community where I was living. People poured so much love for us. The people from this church, almost every single day I was receiving cards from you all. That is the church, that is the community, and that is the relationship God wants from each of us. When our siblings are in need, we must stand with them. Our brothers and sisters who went far from us due to complexities of our lives, reach out to them. Do not turn away from conflict. Talk to people, ask for forgiveness, give forgiveness. And always remind yourself that God cares about our relationships. God cares how we interact with each other. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the foundation of the church, which is to confess that Jesus is the Lord. And today's gospel, Jesus encourages us, and Jesus encourages the church to be a community that can build relationships. Reading from Paul's letter to Romans reinforced that claim how to build relationship, how to build a community by loving one another. No matter who they are, no matter who, no matter, and that's period. Love is the answer of building relationships within this church, in our homes, in our communities. Generally, it might take more times and efforts than you expect to build relationships. But dear saints of St. Michael, I tell you, not seven times, but some translations say even 77 times or seven times 70. Try to build relations. It's about restoring relationship. It's about conf confronting conflicts and then bring those lost rams into your lives, into this congregation, into this community. Jesus intentionally spent times with sinners, Gentiles, tax collectors. When Matthew was sitting at the tax booth, Jesus called him and asked him to follow him. Jesus did not avoid people who were out of right relationship with the congregations. Jesus purposely helped who drifted away from the right path. So in a sense, we need to put more effort into our relationships so keep them healthy and good. This is a hard task, but it is worth it. A relationship matters to God. That makes relationship one of the most important things in our lives. And this explains why we endure so much pain, mess in our lives. And we need tons of work to do to maintain those relationships. When you need some extra motivation to do your part, imagine what God do in your situation and why God will pursue us to end of existence. God was even willing to give his only son over to be tortured and crucified to repair our broken, ship, broken relationship with him. Remember what Jesus did? Jesus gave, his only, Jesus gave his life 
to establish the, establish the relationship with God. You and I design for relationship, brothers and sisters. You and I design for relationship, and that is the most important part in our lives. We are designed to have a relationship with God, and we are designed to relationship with one another. The cross is a powerful symbol of that design. We have a vertical beam that signifies our relationship with God and the horizontal beam that, that signifies the relationship with each other. The center point of both of those relationships is the redemptive work of the one that hung on the cross where the vertical and horizontal come together. His name is Jesus, and because of his love for you and for me, we can receive that love and in, in return live out that love with one another. So, my dear brothers, sisters, siblings, there has never been a time in the history of the world when we needed to have a closer relationship with each other than we do now. To talk to each other, to resolve our conflicts, not to avoid the conflicts, but instead talk to talk about those conflicts, conflicts. Forgive each other, love each other. As Jesus commanded to us, go and find someone. Go and talk to someone with whom you haven't talked for months or maybe even for years. And remember, exclusion is not the last option. Loving them is the first and the last option. Even if the things go messy in relationship, always remember how God established relationship with us by giving his one and only son. Remember, relationship matters to God and relationship matters to us. Amen. Let us now recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. As the church, the body of Christ in this time and place, let us offer our prayers responding Lord, hear our prayer, that we may love the Lord with our whole heart and soul and mind and our neighbor as ourselves, claiming the great commandment as our pathway 
and our destination. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our love may be revealed through our actions as we commit ourselves to calling those who are in prison or confined to their homes or living in nursing facilities that in hearing their voice, we will hear the voice of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace may flourish wherever there is strife or enmity between peoples, bringing opportunities for improved nutrition, health, and education, revealing God's mantle of light. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the power of the Holy Spirit in guiding us in our discovery of our vocation, our manner of expressing God's indwelling love, so that we may be passionate about our work and ministry, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to turn away from anything that places a barrier between God's love and our actions, so that in turning back to Jesus, we may receive mercy for the past and strength for the future. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings upon those who have died, that their souls and the souls of all faithful departed, through the mercy of God, may rest in peace. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the blessings we have received, we continue our prayers. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially for Mary, the Dirk family, Rick and Sue, Dwayne, Jack F., the people of South Sudan, Trevon, Venita, Basmati, Floyd and Christine, Misha and Phyllis, Dorothy, George, Annie, Ruth, Doreen, Reese, Laudan, Amanda, Morris, Deng, Marlene, Denine, Brad, Jonathan, Anne, Carol, Peg, Joanne, Bill, Steve and Susan, Chris, April, Linda, Don, Shaista, Suleiman, Navid, Madison, Ardanus and Edna, Royanne, Cherry, Yvonne, Victor, Ricky, Joyce, and Beverly, and Vincent, Bob, Howard, Maureen, Jennifer, Yannick, Dennis, Fatima, Barbara, Beverly, Heather Y, and for this assembly, as we serve the sisters and brothers among us, and as we work outside the church, forget us not, O Holy One. Let us pray to the Lord, that they may be delivered from their distress. Let us now pray. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. At this time, I would ask that you join me as we recognize all of those kids 
well, from uh, pre-K right up to the end of high school, that have now returned to school. Also for those who are attending virtually and uh, the full-time teachers who are having this additional responsibility to lead kids who are at home virtually and also the newly minted parents slash teachers who are at home helping their kids now at the start of this new year. Please join me in a prayer as we uh, ask God to bestow patience, wisdom, and godly love on the administration of education for the teachers and those who are receiving it, the kids in school and at home as well. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, we praise you for wisely gifting us with children. Give to each one a clear sense of your love that they may feel your presence supporting them throughout this school year. Guide their choices, direct their quest for knowledge, bless their relationships, and use their successes and failures as opportunities to grow in understanding of who you have them to be. Continue, we pray, to shape them as branches of the one true vine, that they may ever walk in the way of Christ, grow strong in your spirit's love for all people, and know the complete joy of life in you. We also ask, Lord, that you remember and also provide health, strength, and wisdom to all full-time teachers and all newly meant parents slash teachers. Grant them the ability, Lord, to discern through computer screens the needs and the additional support, the joy and the presence of those kids who they're administering to. Grant them health, not only physical health, but also emotional and mental health to deal with the, or to be able to manage the additional stress that virtual learning may have on their jobs. I grant, I hope, Lord, that the technology in which they're using continue to be consistent and strong. And I pray, Lord, that the unity that they have with the kids that they're administering to continue to be full of love and be bonded in hope and wisdom. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. God's peace is the thread in which we base our existence and the hope of love that we are always seeking. May God's peace run through you this week. May God's love lift you up. I now invite you to turn to your family member or friend if you are able to do so and share the love of God by way of peace with them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Virtual hug and love. A blessed good morning, saints, and it's now time for our notices. Again, I would like to express tremendous gratitude 
for you waking up this morning and joining us in recognizing and praising our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anytime we have breath, that we could do so lovingly, joyfully, and cheerfully. It is a good day, a good day indeed. Uh, in our e-blast that was circulated on Thursday evening, you would have seen several notices in which we wanted to communicate to you, and I hope you had a chance to read them. If not, here is a brief recap of some very important notices. We have a new online church directory, and it's coming. The email invitation will be sent out the week of September 21st. So it will provide a tremendous amount of information, and it's another tool in which we can engage in connectivity and keep us connected as church members. So please look out for that email. If it is outstanding information that we need from you, please provide Megan with it. But it's another tool in which we can stay connected and share information with each other. We are also seeking donations for the victims of the flood in South Sudan. As many of you know, we have a thriving Sudanese congregation that also worships uh, with us at St. Michael's. And uh, there was a, a disastrous flood uh, a few weeks ago uh, in which many lives were lost. And in addition to that, many are now homeless and without uh, basic food and medical supplies. So if it is that you feel so called to give to this cause, please let us know and uh, by way of emailing Megan or myself. Uh, and you will also find information in the e-blast on how you can give and assist those in need. Of course, tomorrow is... Labor Day and a blessed Labor Day to all of you. Whatever you do, please do so safely and joyfully. As a reminder, uh, I will pitch this from the stewardship chair. Uh, we are so grateful that you have continued to financially support the church during this time. Uh, it has kept the lights on and kept us uh, be able to do what we are doing. We are so grateful for your support. And as we continue to seek your support, uh, I now invite you to consider uh, continuing to give, either by way of check, by way of um, text messages, or by even um, providing your debit and credit card uh, through our website, stmichaelstonemountain.org forward slash give. So there are three different ways in which you can continue to give. And I want to invite you to do so. We've made it quite easy for you to use a modern technology to continue to financially support the church. More details of that, of course, it can be found in our e-blast or check our website, stmichaelstonemountain.org. We continue with our vi vibrant Christian formation program every second and fourth sun Saturday at 9 a.m., we have a Bible study, and our uh, Wednesday Bible studies will resume with the study of Matthew every Wednesday after the healing service at 12 p.m. So we have at 9 a.m. continuing the Bible study, focusing on the book, uh, the story uh, that's going through all of the books of the Bible. And again, we're starting a new uh, Bible study on Wednesday at 12 p.m., and we are focusing solely on the book of Matthew. I think I've exhausted all of our notices, just to make sure you're informed. And of course, this is the first Sunday in the month of September. So before I close, I'd like to recognize and i also like to celebrate with those who are uh, uh, having a, uh, celebrating a birthday in the month of September. We had uh, Laura Arthur, may it sound familiar, as uh, my wife, she celebrated her birthday yesterday. I'm exhausted from all the preparations, but we had a great time. Uh, happy birthday to you, Laura, again. Robert Card, Yvonne Rubens, Sharon Dennis, Samantha Porter, Louise Fredericks, Cleveland Bino, Millie Garner, Halston Edwards, John Taylor, K. 
Katie Gelton, Allison Connell, Olive Kit Blake, Maxwell McGee. Happy, happy, happy birthday. And Faustina Ward Osborne. Someone has pointed to me at the back. Don't forget her name. So uh, happy birthday to all of you. If I was a, 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 a wonderful singer, I would sing, but I would spare you all of that. <laughs> There's lots of agreement at the back as well. And we'll be recognizing wedding anniversaries next week. So happy birthday to all of you uh, celebrating a birthday in a month of September. And whatever you do this week, remember God is inviting you into relationship with one another. If it is, according to what Samun mentioned, the bishop said earlier, if there's a ram in your midst, one out of the hundred uh, sheep that are missing, go and find that person. Go in love and seek a conversation with that person. Go in love, recognizing that when two of you are meeting, God is in the midst of you, and with that, anything is possible. Amen. serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thanks for watching our video today. At St. Michael's, we are finding new ways to practice fellowship with one another and would love for you to continue to join us. Please like us on Facebook, visit our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find the links in the description on this video below. See you next time and God bless you.